Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, continuing our playlist called Labs. In the last video, we talked about the natriuretic peptides such as ANP, BNP, and CNP. Today, it's time for a topic that used to drive me crazy, the serum ascites albumin gradient, or SAAG. Put differently, what is the cause of your ascites? With that said, now let's get started. This is my lab's playlist on YouTube, and today's video is video number 21. You will never understand the serum ascites albumin gradient without a robust background in physiology. So let's go. Your total body water makes about 60% of your total body weight. Two thirds of this water is in your intracellular fluid inside your cells. One third is in the extracellular fluid, which means outside the cell. This extracellular fluid is present in plasma, interstitial space, and transcellular, which includes the three P's, your serosal cavities, the pleura pericardium, and peritoneum. Never ever forget this. So the fluid in your peritoneum is part of the ECF. But hey, medicosis, how about the fluid inside my red blood cells? Say it again, red blood cells. Yeah, these are cells. So the fluid inside of them is still intracellular fluid. However, the fluid in the plasma is extracellular fluid. The fluid is in the interstitium is extracellular fluid. The fluid in your peritoneal cavity is extracellular fluid. Most of the proteins are intracellular. Few proteins are extracellular. Of those extracellular proteins, most of them are in the plasma. That's why we call them plasma proteins. The hero of this is the albumin. So what the flip is edema? Edema is accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. Another way of saying the same thing is when your fluid leaves your capillaries and goes to your interstitial space. And now you will be swollen like a older beast. This swelling is called edema. The fluid that leaves the capillaries and goes to the interstitial space, aka the fluid of edema, could be an exudate or a transudate. What causes the exudate? Increased capillary permeability, basically inflammation. What causes a transudate? Increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is the pressure that pushes fluid from the capillary to the outside, or decreased capillary oncotic pressure, which is the pressure that holds the fluid towards the inside. So you either increase this one or decrease this one. In either case, fluid will leave your capillaries and goes to your interstitial space, hashtag edema. What causes increased capillary hydrostatic pressure? Basically, too much fluid volume in the capillary. But what causes decreased capillary oncotic pressure? Loss of albumin. Because albumin pulls towards the capillary. When you lack albumin, the fluid is gonna leak to the outside, which is edema. So now I have acute inflammation and fluid is leaving my capillaries and going to the outside. Is this edema? Absolutely. Exudate or a transudate? Exudate. Is it due to increased capillary permeability or increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased oncotic pressure? It's due to increased capillary permeability. Can it have pus? Absolutely. Is it pitting? No, it's not. What is oozing from the capillary to the outside? water and proteins. And as you know, proteins do not pit. You cannot make a dent in a protein. And that was the first story. Second story is your patient with congestive heart failure. What happened? Your heart has failed. Your heart has failed. Your heart cannot pump blood or your heart cannot receive blood. Either way, fluid is gonna pile up and accumulate before the heart. So if this is the right side of the heart and the right side of the heart is toast, it has failed. Now fluid is gonna pile up here in the IVC and the tributaries of the IVC, including the liver. Will this lead to swelling? Absolutely, this is edema. Exudate or transudate? Transudate. You know why? Because this is increased capillary hydrostatic pressure. Back up pressure, back up pressure, back up pressure. It's gonna pile up here called cardiac cirrhosis, it's gonna pile up in your abdominal cavity called ascites. Third story or stories. Here we have patients with low proteins in the blood or low albumin. Why is this? Maybe I'm not eating enough proteins. Quash your core. Maybe I'm not making proteins. Liver disease or liver failure. Or maybe I'm eating, I'm making, but I'm losing protein like crazy. Who's losing your protein? Blame the gut or blame the kidney? When you blame the gut, it could be malabsorption syndrome, a problem in your intestines, or a protein-losing gastropathy, aka menetrier's disease, a problem in your stomach. 
Blame the kidney? Protein losing nephropathy, aka nephrotic syndrome. In all of these cases, your plasma proteins is low. Serum albumin is low. Do you get edema? Absolutely. Exudate or transudate? Transudate. Is it due to increased hydrostatic or decreased oncotic? Decreased oncotic pressure because you lost the source of the oncotic pressure. Hashtag albumin. For more info about exudate versus transudate, check out this video about the pleural effusion. It's in my pulmonology playlist. Are you ready for some questions? Let's go. Please answer exudate or transudate. Left sided heart failure causing pulmonary edema. What do you think? The answer is this is a transudate. Next, quashier core causing edema. Is this a transudate or exudate? The answer is transudate. Number three, severe liver disease such as cirrhosis. I'm not making any albumin, decrease oncotic pressure causing edema. Exudate or transudate? This is a transudate. Also, cirrhosis can lead to portal hypertension, which is also a transudate. Nephrotic syndrome causing edema, a transudate. Minitriase disease causing edema, transudate. Malabsorption syndrome causing edema, also a transudate. Pause and review. How about acute chest syndrome? Exudate. Pneumonia causing empyema, exudate. Tuberculosis causing empyema, exudate. Lung abscess, exudate. Bronchiectasis, exudate. Primary myelofibrosis, too many cells, exudate. Pause and review. How about DVT causing pulmonary problems and pleural effusion? Exudate, asbestosis, exudate. Lupus, exudate. Rheumatoid arthritis, exudate. Lung cancer, exudate. Metastatic breast cancer, exudate. Pause and review. Let's talk about cirrhosis of the liver. Why do I have ascites in cases of cirrhosis? There are two reasons, both of which are transudate, by the way. It could be you have portal hypertension, too much pressure in your vessels, leading to increased hydrostatic pressure. That's a transudate. And when you increase hydrostatic pressure, what's gonna happen? The fluid is gonna leave the vessel and go to the interstitial space. Moreover, you have cirrhosis. That's right. Your liver is toast. That's true. You cannot make albumin anymore. Oops, the oncotic pressure is gonna drop like a rock. Also a transudate. So why do we have ascites and cirrhosis? Due to increased hydrostatic pressure and decrease oncotic pressure at the same time. But hey, medicosis, miliary TB can cause ascites. That's right. Cancer also can cause ascites. That's right. Liver abscess can cause ascites. That's true. Pancreatitis can cause ascites. That's right. Cirrhositis can cause ascites. That's right. All of these causes are an exudate. That's true. So how can I tell the difference then? How do I know that the ascites was caused by increased capillary permeability, increased capillary oncotic pressure, or decreased capillary oncotic pressure? How can I tell? This is the story of the serum ascites albumin gradient. Now it's all gonna make sense. Your blood is made of plasma and cells. The plasma is water and proteins. The proteins are albumin and some globulins. Let's say that medicosis has ascites. So now there is albumin inside of my blood vessels called the serum albumin. And there is albumin in my acidic fluid known as ascites albumin. Which compartment has more albumin? Is it the serum compartment or the interstitial fluid compartment? And the answer is the serum compartment always has more albumin. So here is your serum. We start with the serum. Ascites, we end with ascites. Albumin, albumin in each one. Gradient, there is a minus here. So the serum ascites albumin gradient is the albumin in the serum minus the albumin in the ascites. And since the serum albumin will always be greater than your ascites albumin, the result of the gradient is always a positive number. So if you come to me and say, hey, medicosis, the patient has an SAAG of negative two, I'll kick your gluteus maximus, metaphorically speaking. There is no such thing. So let's say that my serum albumin is four. My ascites albumin is two. Can you get me the gradient? Four minus two, the SAAG is now two. Let's talk about what happens in transudate and then we'll discuss the exudate. Transudate, what's happening? Oh, what's happening is that fluid is leaving your blood and going to the extracellular fluid. In this case, it's the peritoneal cavity. What is in the transudate? Water. Do you have protein in the transudate? Shut up, no proteins in the transudate, just water. So when water leaves the serum and goes outside, what's gonna happen to the albumin in the acidic fluid? And since you're adding water on it, it's gonna get diluted 
and will decrease. But what do you think is going to happen to the albumin in the serum as water is leaving? This albumin is getting more concentrated. That's true. Serum albumin concentration will go up. What do you think is going to happen to the gradient? When the serum albumin goes up and the ascites albumin goes down, the gradient is going to widen. Well, no duh. And that's why the serum albumin ascites gradient is greater than 1.1 if this is a trend date, if only water is leaving, if no albumin is being dished out, if the edema is caused by increased capillary hydrostatic pressure. Conversely, what is an exudate? An exudate is a fluid that leaves the serum and goes to outside. What is the nature of the exudate fluid? Water plus proteins. So albumin is leaving the blood and going outside. What's going to happen to the concentration of albumin in my serum? It's going to go down. What's going to happen to the concentration of albumin in the ascites fluid as albumin is leaving the serum and going to the ascitic fluid? It's going to go up. Therefore, what's going to happen to the gradient is going to shrink. It's going to decrease. It's going to drop below 1.1. What's the measuring unit? Well, it's the same measuring unit as albumin. What's the normal serum albumin? Oh, it's about 4 grams per deciliter. Use the same measuring unit, doofus. How is that hard? So, if my ascites is caused by an exudate, like an inflammation, like increased capillary permeability, what's going to happen to the SAAG? It's going to be below 1.1. So, in a nutshell, if the cause of your ascites is a transudate, in other words, only water is leaving, the SAAG will go up. But if the cause of your ascites is an exudate, in other words, water, and albumin is leaving, the gradient is going to shrink. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, medicosis schmeasy. Because medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So my patient has ascites. What should I do? Keep calm and get the paracentesis. Tap that big swollen belly. What did you do in case of rheumatology? The patient's joint was inflamed. How do you know if it's osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, gout arthritis, septic arthritis? How did you know? I tapped the joint, I got the fluid, I sent it to the lab. Do the same stinking thing here. Get that puppy, send it to the lab to order the SAAG, which is the difference between the serum albumin and the ascites albumin. If the SAAG is low, it's probably an exudate. If the SAAG is high, it's probably a transudate. Which one of these two situations is likely the portal hypertension? Well, what is portal hypertension? Oh, uh, there's hypertension in my vessels due to cirrhosis, for example. And what happens when everything is clogged up? Oh, the pressure is gonna rise. So when they have increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, what's that? That's likely a transudate. Which means in this situation, my SAAG is high. Water only is leaving and the albumin in the serum will become more concentrated, this will go up, but the albumin in the ascites will go down, become more diluted, and this will go down, SAAG will widen. Other causes of increased capillary hydrostatic pressure include the CHF, especially right-sided heart failure, what we call cardiac cirrhosis or nutmeg liver, as well as butt Chiari syndrome, caused by a clot in the hepatic veins. On the other hand, if the SAAG is low, less than 1.1, this is not a portal hypertension. This is not caused by an increased capillary hydrostatic pressure. This is likely an exudate caused by increase, increased capillary permeability or decreased oncotic pressure. Anything but an increase in the hydrostatic pressure. Give me examples of increased capillary permeability. You have inflammation, infection, such as tuberculosis, malignancy, and biliary leak. Give me an example of a decreased serum albumin, decreased oncotic pressure, nephrotic syndrome, quashier core malabsorption. I'm not eating it. I'm not absorbing it. I am peeing it out or pooping it out if it's menetrier's disease. But hey, medicosis, sometimes cirrhosis can have low serum albumin causing a transudate, which is here. And that's why not all cases of cirrhosis is going to have a high SAAG. Only 80% of cases of cirrhosis will be in this category. The other 20% of cases are here. Mnemonic time. If the fluid is a transudate, it's probably going to have a high SAAG, a transcendent gradient. But be careful. This has to be due to increased hydrostatic pressure and not a decrease in the oncotic pressure. 
So if it's an exudate, it's easy. It's going to be a low gradient. If it's a transudate, ask yourself, is it due to increased hydrostatic pressure, aka portal hypertension? If the high hydrostatic pressure is high, the gradient is high. But if the oncotic pressure is low, the gradient is low. If you remember my video on the pleural effusions, the difference between exudate and transudate was here in the lights criteria. Do you remember the first part? The effusion, which is the fluid in the pleura, over the serum protein ratio. If it's high, it means it has too much protein. And the protein-rich fluid is called an exudate. But if this ratio is low, it's protein-poor fluid, known as the transudate, because it has water only with no proteins. Can we borrow the same logic and use a different method to tell the difference? Absolutely. This method is arguably better than the gradient. In other words, the division is better than subtraction. How do you do this? Easy. The effusion over the serum, the fluid over the serum. What kind of fluid? Peritoneal fluid. Ascites. Okay. If it's low, it means it's protein poor, a transudate. If it's high, it's an exudate. Because if this is high, it means that the fluid albumin is robust. And the only way you will have too much albumin in your ascites is if your capillary is leaking albumin with the water. Question of the day, let's match. So you have two possibilities, either a serum albumin ascites gradient of 0.8 or a serum albumin ascites gradient of 1.3. And you have five cases. The first patient has lymphoma. Do you think he will have this gradient or this gradient? How about the second patient, miliary TB, this or this? But Chiari, this or this, cirrhosis, this or this, CHF, this or this. Let me know the correct answers in the comment section. If you like this video, you will enjoy my acid base imbalances course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. And you will like my Utacoids pharmacology course if you want to learn about cyclic AMP, serotonin, histamine, treatment of peptic ulcer disease, etc. And for the next six students only, you can get a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code histamine. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.